Welcome to part one of a multi-part series where I will be machining some pieces and you will see the final product at the end of this four or five part series, however many parts it ends up being. But in part one here, I will be showing you how to use a scribe to scratch lines into aluminum. You can scratch lines into other materials and make sure your scribe, your point is nice and sharp. And then I will also be showing you how to use a square, which you see here. I have a six inch scale, or some people call it a ruler, uh, connected to the scale. You see there's a small divot running through the center of the scale. And that lines up uh, with a piece inside the square. And then there's a knurled piece that you screw righty tighty to tighten the scale in place, however far you're sticking it out from the square. So in this case, I am sticking out to end up with the final product is going to be inch and a quarter long pieces, but I'm actually sticking the scale out past the face of the square an extra sixteenth of an inch just so I can mill down each side of my piece nice and flat after I cut it on the bandsaw because anytime you cut something, you get a rough cut and you're going to want to mill it flat if you want it to look nice and smooth and even. So each cut is going to be an inch and five sixteenths apart from each other. So with the ruler sticking out of the, the square, I stuck it out an inch and five sixteenths. And wherever that line is for inch and five sixteenths on the ruler, I'm going to have that inch and five sixteenths line just barely hidden away into the face of the square. So you shouldn't be able to barely, should not be able to see that line. And now for the next line, because the face of the square is going to always be at the end of the material, but the scale or the ruler is just going to be sticking out further each time, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. I know, right? And this time, you will add another inch and five sixteenths onto your first inch and five sixteenths sticking out of the ruler. So that will put you up to two and five eighths of an inch. And then you will continue on from there. The next stop should be... Uh, I believe, what would that be, three and three quarters? Maybe three and 13 sixteenths? Uh, anyways, just make sure your math is on the money as you are sticking out the ruler however far you are. And make sure the square is up against a flat part of your material, or the square is up against a flat part of your material. And then when you hold the scale down, you want to make sure you the scale of the ruler, I'm going to interchange between the two terms, but you're going to want to hold the ruler and the material down together tightly, and you want the ruler to sit flat on top of the material as you see me do. And that way, the ruler that's in the square won't shift at all on you, either back and forth or, you know, go a little cockeyed. And once you have your material and the scale held tightly and the square is up against the end of the material then you can take your scribe which I have here and you can scratch a straight line as straight as you possibly can into the material and you see this material is actually a little bit thicker than the the width of my scale my scale is about three quarters of an inch uh, wide the material is about I, th I believe it's a inch and a quarter wide and I'm gonna to have to move the square down with the scale another halfway down the width of the material so I can continue my straight and scribed line. And sometimes if you scribe your line into the material and you don't get a good line at first, make sure you go back and do it again because you, you're gonna to wanna to be able to see the line that you scribed in the material because the material, material is shiny sometimes and later on if you're gonna cut that piece like in the vertical bandsaw, like I'll be doing later on, you're gonna wanna make sure that line is, is clear to see, especially under light, it could it could wash out in bright light. And then you might wanna actually pour in some, uh, some layout fluid if you have any of that. So that'll help you see your scribe lines even better. Fortunately, I don't have any of that at the shop. Had it at the old shop, but not the new shop, unfortunately. So next, I went over to the table where the vertical bandsaw is, and the end of the table is squared off, so I know that's straight. So I, took a piece of uh, angle and I clamped it on two ends on the table. And then at three different points, I measured from the angle out to the right side of the, the squared off table and made sure that the distance from the same spot 
in three different sections of the angle was the same measurement from that spot of the angle all the way to the right side of the table at three different spots. And once I got my measurements the same, about 13 and 3 eighths of an inch at the three different spots, that's how I knew that my piece of angle was squared up with the, with the bandsaw blade. And therefore I could put my material up against the piece of angle and all I had to do was push it forward with a piece of wood because so you don't want to cut your fingers that would be really that'd be awful and that way you can just start pushing your material and the left side of the material is just going to ride against the piece of angle as it gets cut by the bandsaw blade now if I ha would have just had a piece of 3 16 aluminum in the size I needed I wouldn't have to go you worry about trying to split this thing in half but here we are and part two will actually be another teaching moment of how you can machine something flat if it's really thin, like a good way to grab it in the milling machine vise. So stick around for part two, look out for that in a day or two. So as you can see, it actually didn't cut it quite as straight and true as I thought. I think that may be because if you actually look at the teeth on a bandsaw blade, they're not, want the tooth, uh, the, let's say for example a tooth underneath uh the, a higher tooth is actually there's there's kind of pointing outwards from each other so they're not all perfectly in a line so i think the material may have been kind of moving around slightly as i tried to cut it straight as possible and maybe my piece of angle wasn't clamped down as tight as i could have had it all different factors here and maybe i wasn't holding the material up against the piece of angle as hard as i could have so just another thing to keep in mind and I also got the material uh, lined up with the bandsaw blade because you can cut th straight through the material, but you want to make sure you cut through the middle, as close to the middle of the material as possible because once I have the two ends open, as you see, then I'm going to go ahead and face both sides and get them nice and flat. I want to make sure there's enough material to do that. And then here, I'm just double checking to make sure the piece of angle didn't shift on me at all. And from my measurements, it doesn't. I'm still looking at 13 and 3 eighths of an inch at all three positions, so I'm just going to have to scratch my head on that one. But thanks for watching, and look out for part two.